I'd like to start by asking you all to envision you're, you're walking into clinic, looking at your patient list, and you, you see the 1 p.m. patient, post-vasectomy, pain, um, here for answers. And that, that pit in your stomach that you get when you see this patient and you're empathizing with the patient and the awful debilitating condition they may be experiencing. And then thinking of yourself and the provider and the clinical challenge that these patients often represent. So with that said, we'll get underway here. Post-vasectomy pain syndrome, um, contemporary management, some tips and tricks. No disclosures to report. So. For overview, about half a million vasectomies are performed annually in the U.S., and there's been a recent uptick following the 2022 Dobbs decision that's been well um, published on. What are the risks of vasectomy? Uh, one to two percent risk of hematoma or infection, low risk of early recanalization or a failure, um, up to one in 2,000, and the most feared complication, one to two percent risk of chronic pain. So what is chronic pain? This is um, you know, post-vasectomy pain syndrome. I've chose this book here, published 2014, The Modern Medical Nightmare of Post-Vasectomy Pain Syndrome. Kind of an interesting choice of artwork for the cover, um, the cruelest cut of all. The author is a psychiatrist and a, kind of a counterculture researcher and author. But I, you know, he comes to a conclusion at this book that the medical community under uh, appreciates and kind of minimalizes this condition such that you know his thesis is that we shouldn't offer vasectomies, and it's he's certainly very polarizing uh, and a little bit of an outlier. But it's important that to know there are folks out there with these opinions, and some of our patients do read these books. So when talking about this, it's worth noting. So prevalence again, one to two percent in post vasectomy pain syndrome is defined as pain persisting greater than three months following vasectomy. As we all know, there's different patterns of presentation. It can be constant pain. It could be intermittent pain um, associated with inciting factors such as ejaculation, intercourse, or erection. Where is the pain? Is it diffuse across the whole scrotum or localized to the epididymis or perhaps a sperm, sperm granuloma or even radiating up the spermatic cord? What causes post vasectomy pain syndrome? Uh, there's been several proposed mechanisms a neuropathic etiology, there's been some studies looking um, at some perineural fibrosis that's found more prevalently in patients with PVPS. Is it an obstructive mechanism? We know there's epididymal hypertension following vasectomy. Or is it an immune-driven, you know, inappropriate inflammatory cascade? We know majority of men following vasectomy will have detectable anti-sperm antibodies. Uh, but the reality is these are all single-center studies, and we just don't have the literature to know definitively what the cause is. Is there one sole mechanism or could there be different subtypes of PVPS caused by different um, etiologies? And, and the truth is we just do not know um, at this point. So PVPS is a diagnosis of exclusion and you know, this is similar to interstitial cystitis. I know there's some here who treat IC. It's important before labeling a man with such a um, uh, kind of polarizing diagnosis and one that can really follow them in the chart to cast a broad differential. So uh, a broad differential is listed here, perform a uh, careful physical exam starting on the unaffected side and then moving to the affected side, taking note for is there a sperm granuloma, is there a focal tenderness or more diffuse. And then when it comes to tests, I would always advocate for a, a broad approach. Um, so again, often these patients have seen a few providers, they often feel abandoned by the healthcare system and they want a comprehensive workup. So a scrotal ultrasound, UA, urine culture, even a semen culture um, are what I would recommend for these patients. If there's any other symptoms that are a little atypical, sometimes some um, paresthesias or numbness in the perineum, that could be a sign of a Tarlov cyst, which can also cause pain in the penis and so, uh, penis and scrotum, and so for that reason, MRI sacrum can make sense. So general treatment philosophy for post vasectomy pain syndrome is beginning with the least invasive options and then escalating as needed. Uh, and of course, I'd like to highlight the importance of engaging multidisciplinary support. Starting with the non-surgical treatment options, would recommend scrotal support, followed by anti-inflammatory medications. Uh, I recommend meloxicam, 15 milligrams uh, for once a day dosing for four to six weeks. If that fails, second line medical therapy would be a um, neuromodulating therapy such as gabapentin or a tricyclic antidepressant such as amitriptyline, 10 to 20 milligrams, usually given at night for amitriptyline due to some fatigue this can cause. 
pelvic floor physical therapy is an excellent option for these patients. Certainly, pelvic floor dysfunction is not the underlying cause of post vasectomy pain syndrome, but certainly can exacerbate the symptoms. And on physical exam, we all know those patients, they, they're, they're crouched over, contracted, they won't even let you perform an exam. They're just very tense with clear pelvic floor dysfunction. And there's good data to support PFPT for post vasectomy pain syndrome. Acupuncture, limited data uh, specifically for post vasectomy pain syndrome, but certainly if you're looking for other non-invasive options before moving to more invasive options, um, I can tell you anecdotally, I've had some patients with great responses to, to acupuncture. If the patient's failed medical therapy, next step would be a diagnostic spermatic cord block. I perform these as a separate office visit, easy, uh, relatively quick and easy visit for the patient, uh, you know, blended local anesthetic, and I, I do recommend adding a steroid, uh, 40 milligrams um, of Kinelog uh, that can help with the anti-inflammatory effect. It's both diagnostic and therapeutic. So really the, the point from a diagnostic point of view is to rule out the very small number of men who actually, actually have a paradoxical worsened pain with the spermatic cord block. Doc, that made things worse. You know, that's not a guy you want to offer any surgical intervention to. And those guys are few and far between, but you'd rather find out at this point with this um, cord block than postoperatively. As for therapeutic um, roles of spermatic cord block, Dr. Levine is popularized this, the idea of, of breaking the pain cycle and having repeat cord blocks every two to three weeks for a total of four to five blocks. And some patients will complete that, feel better, and, and will pursue no additional no treatment. They, they, they feel a little better after that. And uh, it's a non-invasive option. It's very viable. So what about the surgical treatments for post vasectomy pain syndrome? <clears throat> these are the, the five main treatments we have listed here. I'll walk through these. Take-home points in general is that success rates for the surgical management of PVPS are, are, are okay. They're moderate, you know, uh, 50 to 80 percent. Th they're not fantastic, uh, but it's a little better than a flip of a coin. Starting at the top, excision of a sperm gran granuloma. This is probably the least uh, commonly used uh, method of the first four, but best would be for a, a man with a large and exquisitely painful sperm granuloma at the vasectomy site. Move on to microdenervation of the spermatic cord. Minimally invasive procedure through subinguinal incisions um, can be classically performed microscopically. That's how I perform them. Also can be done robotically. Cost effective is still uh, um, a little less with robot and probably takes a little more time, but there's been some nice publications showing viability of the robotic approach. The two pictures here are of the full template um, microsurgical denervation and then a more targeted approach. So um, there's been some recent studies showing that the more targeted approach where the focus is on the cremasteric sheath, stripping the vas, and then some of the posterior lipomatous complex, just addressing that trifecta nerve complex can have similar efficacy as a full template um, as shown in the left, but much less tedious, uh, less time in the OR, and should have little less risk, right? Less post-op hydrocele risk, less risk of testicular damage. The data hasn't shown that yet. The, the, the follow-up isn't, isn't far out enough yet, but it's an appealing option to know that the targeted approach, a little easier on the surgeon, a little less risk, we think, and seemingly similar uh, efficacy. Again, the best candidate for the microdenervation of the cord is going to be a guy who has pain radiating up the spermatic cord. Um, Next would be epididymectomy, a little more common in Europe than in the U.S., but the, your ideal patient for this is a patient with pinpoint tenderness isolated to uh, the epididymis. Next would be vasectomy reversal. Um, this is a fantastic option for guys, and uh, again, classic patient here would be a guy with um, an inciting factor of ejaculation or associated with sexual activity. Of course, with this, we would hopefully restore fertility, and so for some patients, that's, that's not an option. Um, and if not, often not covered by insurance, that can be a barrier, but very good success rates uh, with uh, vasectomy reversal. Of the different surgical options I've starred, the microdenervation and the vasectomy reversal, they, their studies tend to be a little bit closer to 80%, a few higher than that, um, but a little bit higher success rates when compared to the other options. Final option would be an orchiectomy. This, of course, would be a last resort. 
Um, there's some studies to show an inguinal approach has a little higher success rate. Of note, uh, success rates of orchiectomy is even lower than the four other um, primary procedures, probably due to selection bias from patients that end up needing an orchiectomy, but it's important to know you're not assured of, of cure, uh, even if you uh, perform orchiectomy. So here's a diagram kind of outlining uh, our approach here at CU Men's Health. Uh, for the sake of time, we'll get through this. In summary, take-home points, post vasectomy pain symptom remains a um, challenging problem for both uh, urologists and clinicians. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's important to start with non-invasive therapies and escalate onwards. I'd like to highlight the importance of multidisciplinary approach and that various surgical options exist with moderate success rates. Thank you.